What up my freaks, Ruinous Insight here with part, uh, I want to say, 39 of my Total War Warhammer 3 modded Archeon the Everchosen campaign. So as we saw last time, Chant continues to have fun obliterating armies and both Thoric and another Court of Libaras army and was destroyed. Azazel has arrived at the Isthmus of Illustria and has revived Skeggy. And between the episodes I did a few things as well, namely I've decided to start moving Bellicor out. Yeah, his army is not complete yet and will take some time as we need both gifted and allied units, but uh, we'll make do with what we got until it... Uh, uh, until it's going good. I also did give Bellacor his items, so he has our second Armor of Destiny, our, I want to say, eighth Talisman of Preservation. We have a lot of these. And our second Crown of Everlasting Glory, so he's going to be pretty darn nasty in a melee fight. As well as a Trickster Shard, because, I mean, what else are we going to give him there? Unlike the Beastmen, it seems like we don't have the really good... Uh, uh, whatever this slot is called, arcane item that gives 10 ward save and whatever the other stuff was, but oh well, you can't have everything. I also, between the episode, did this little tiny fight at White Peak. I... Uh, it... It, it warranted a fight rather than an auto-resolve, and I didn't want to waste Valkia's turn just sort of sitting there, so... She's now arrived on Ulthuan first, and considering we uh, deprived her of the duel with Tyrion, it uh, is only proper that that is what we do. Anyway, uh, in terms of what we gotta do this turn, there's nothing. I did all the uh, building, building, and other admins, so I believe we're ready to end the said turn and see what it gets us. Just gotta make sure we keep above that 800% uh, research rate and we can get all of the text completed really quickly. So much more quickly, twice as quickly, I should say. Hmm, giant manacles, you're tempting as well, but we gotta get the gifts up and running first, and then we'll uh, consider the other stuff after. Anyway, uh, unassigned skill points, ignored, path to glory, outpost upgrades, I'll probably do between the episodes at some point. But for now, let's move. All right, Ally mobilizes. I do have to wonder whether Ally will have actually taken it or not, but we shall see. I think it would have said if it uh, if it had actually been taken, but we'll see again. All right, Pirates, Golden Order. I don't imagine any of these guys are going to be attacking us. Wurzag most likely wants peace, but that's obviously not going to happen. All right, let's see. Sylvania, Argolon, Kuhan. Lewin was nearby to our third Nurgle army, but he was not... Uh, uh, looks like he was not brave enough to attack it. All right, and what do we have here? Glut of Souls gives us souls from battles, but we have infinite souls, so it hardly matters. I guess we'll just get the additional allegiance with uh, the Legion of Asgore, though I think with them we're actually either maxed out or nearly so. Province secured Celestial Lake... Uh, what is this? Oh. Okay. Uh, I guess these guys lost it to a rebellion and then retook it. That's fine. Technology researched. Swell. Now, what are we looking at here? So, yeah, they didn't take it. All right, that's fine, that's fine. We'll send Chant to do it for us. And go, go, go. And go, 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 like so. Out of resolve this for the XP. A little bit of day. Oh my lord, those poor cockatrices. That's just rude. And we're not going to give it to the vessel. We're going to sack it for the XP. Then we're going to occupy it. And then we're immediately going to trade. Hey, another student. Uh, we're immediately going to trade it to Hag Grief. Occupy. Then leave. Then go into channeling stance. And then trade the altar of spawns. If I can... Oh, it's the first one. Yes, A is first, go figure. Alright, Trey the Altar of Spawns like so, and these guys get uh, the full province, so... And good for them. Then, that allows us to use... Gullator, like so, to auto-resolve... Okay, just to double check, wait, 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 I need to double check whether this is the last territory belonging to these guys, and yes, indeed it is. Also, my neighbor's dog is barking, so sorry if you can hear it, but I can't control them. Uh, <laughs> uh, just the nature of apartment living. Alright, auto resolve you, and no damage, but that was uh, not real. Oh, wow, look at all these armies that were outside here. Alright, then we subjugate Throggy. Alright, lovely. The Rogi is ours. We got a free Hellfire Sword, which will be nice in the Coronate armies at least. Let's destroy this Chaos Rebel Uprising real quick. I'll resolve that. 
and Gulator has places to be as well. So, uh, kill cap. Well, I don't know why I bothered with kill captives. I guess it doesn't really matter. And Gulator. March stance, you are heading back to Brass Keep. Hopefully by the time you reach it, uh, that will be that. There's nothing else to do in this area. And which is great. Archie, you've got a place to be as well. I think you're at max movement range, right? Yeah, I think he is. Alrighty, you're going to Kazidir Kulaz, getting ready for the revival of Azag's faction. I mean, technically it's not dead, so it's not really a revival per se, but yeah. Also, between the episodes, I did manage to trade Eren Grad to the rats, which I'm happy with. Yes, Norskins like their... Uh, uh, huh. You know, maybe I should have actually given that to Wolf or whatever. Uh, Norskins do like their coastline, but... The rats have been doing pretty darn good, so I feel like they deserve a nice reward. Kagan, you can sort of travel with Gulator for now, mostly to just occupy territories. We'll want to also give the la- Huh. Seems like these guys just spawn piles of demons rather than Norskins. I remember that Wolfric did the same thing and being very confused by it. As in me being very confused by it, but anyway. Uh, you can have the Lair of the Troll King, which will hopefully be your capital, though somehow I doubt it. I really wanted that to be his capital. Just... Just because. Just because. Um, but anyway. And I'll give you Siok track in as well. Uh, like so. Yeah, you can have it all, Throg. I don't care. And we don't need to uh, bother with uh, giving other stuff to other... Uh, other factions, and I want him to get Fort Ostrovsk and Zoyshenk and Castle Alexandrinov. So this entire territory or province will be his. So he has at least one full province with the uh, uh, with the necessary stuff as in a capital that allow him to build elite units. I don't think he will because he didn't when he was our ally, when he was our defensive ally or whatever. Uh, but who knows? Well, the possibility exists. And then Fort Ostrovsk, lastly. Yeah, don't bother taking the money. There you go, Throggy. Looks like you should be happy about all this. You've revived and in a in pretty decent shape, I would say. Anyway, Azazel. Ooh, wait a second. We need to undo Blessing of Blood and give us back Death's Bounty. We also want Winged Watchers to be... Hmm. Are any of the Zinchin armies liable to fight right now? I don't think so, so we don't need the warp flame from them. Village, just quickly destroy this little, uh, pathetic little army right here. You've got places to be, so auto-resolve this to death. And I guess take the money and then move out. Not that we really need the money, mind you, but... Now, nah, there we go. Creepin' Death destroyed. I don't think they're one of the ones that revive. I'm not 100% sure on it, but I don't think they are. Anyway, you're headed to the Crooked Moon. Would be nice if you would fully destroy Thor Grimace. He's likely to retake Varenka Hills, but I think maybe we'll send a Nairath Magath to do it. You can keep racking up trolls, and maybe we'll give you a couple Shagoths as well if I can find some. Or gift some to you, rather. Hmm... Could use another Manticore in here, or you know what, we only have one army with giants as well, and I do like the giants. Uh, they're fun if nothing else. Anyway, you go to Varenka Hills, Thorgrim might take Doc Karaz, but honestly none of this really matters. We also gotta make sure we give Beric Var and some of these territories to some factions, though I'm not yet 100% sure as to which. Anyway, back to Zazel in a second. Feast of Pain will switch to Infernal Mechanisms for his second Soul Grinder. We need to keep Deadly Transmission so we can't turn that off. However, Death's Bounty remains and Winged Watchers needs to be swapped out to, I think, Murderous mechan Mysterious Mechanisms. Like so. Alright, Azazel, just to start with you. My dear friend, uh, you can go to Ziggurat, good. Uh, let us delete the demonettes, the non-exalted demonettes, the, the weaker demonettes, and then give you your second Soul Grinder of Slanish. And then next turn you'll get your Keeper of Secrets and your army will finally, at long last, be complete. Next, we need to declare war upon the Jade Court. And I guess we're just going to do it. Like so. Everybody's joining them. Man, our diplomacy looks so interesting. Millions of enemies, millions of trade partners, and millions of vassals. Uh, hopefully we can get a good battle or two out of Yen Bo. Uh, you're going to go into summoning stance, hit to the Ziggurat of Dawn, and we'll give it to Skeggy. Hmm. 
And actually, he sent you up there to destroy Soldier Tor just so we can give its territory to Marathi. Anyway, how to resolve this, this is gonna... Our poor Sultan and our poor Soul Grinders. This is so rude. It's the rudest thing I've ever seen. Gift of Vassal. Alrighty, Earthling Rod, good job to Skeggy and... Oh, I forgot. We should actually give Skeggy itself to these guys. Uh, are you needed down here? I honestly think Cola can handle the rest of this just fine. Although... Hmm. Oh, there's Yanbo. His army's not that strong, though, so not a huge concern. Uh, what I'm now realizing, perhaps, is that... We don't even need to sack this. You don't need XP in this army. Uh, what I'm now realizing, perhaps, is that we may want to get the defeat trait from Mazdamundi onto Azazel, so maybe he'll wait. I just wanted to send him up here to destroy Sildred Tor so we can trade all of this to, uh, to Marathi. I do also want to send Azazel to Ulthuan, but for now, I think. Switch you to channeling, and then go this way. i would at least be quicker taking all of these guys out with both of these guys here. And frankly, there's a lot of territory to be conquered here as well. And we are sending many an army to Ulthuan, and ooh, Malekith wants the Shrine of Cain. I'm sure you do, sir. I'll... huh. Actually, is that... maybe something we want to let him do? Ooh, it's very well defended. I'm not even sure Demokar could take it. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, Siggy, you can move. I know that you're hurt, but you can still move, I think. Yeah, allowing Malik at the land here will allow him to take some territory here, which ain't the worst idea. You can reach this, but you're an untested army, and you're still missing a bunch of stuff, and they've got a very solid garrison here. I think we can wait until you've got everything you need, so just sort of hover around. Maybe we'll attack together with Siggy, maybe we'll attack together with Malekith, maybe we'll have one of them land at Toranlek and one at the Shrine of Cain. What we need from you is some more blood letters. We can get one, but we can't uh, We can't do it while, uh, while fighting. And the reason I'm sort of wary of attacking, like, I know we can win. Here's the problem. We can win, but we can take heavy damage doing so until we get other units. And the problem with that is I really don't want to lose these exalted blood letters as uh, they are uh, they are from our allies and it's going to be difficult to reacquiring them since they cost so much. So, we're not gonna. Anyway, Nurgle's Rot, we need a couple of these guys on the field as well. Doesn't really matter which kind. Well, actually, it kind of does matter which kind. I lied, but uh, for now. Are you the Nurgle's Rot guy? Yes, you are. You're going to go to devote to Nurgle. And what do we have here? Eldritch Aura and Ward Save. I don't really care for Diabolic Splendor, but whatever. It's fine. You're going to head southward and you're going to join Belakor's army. And then you, sir, are going to devote to Korn. Vigor Loss Reduction for Chosen and Eldritch Aura and Iron Skin. Actually, pretty good for an undivided type. Hmm, I'm not sure there's anybody nearby that's uh, looking to get the uh, buffs for the Chosen. Yeah, just go devote to Corn. What do we have? Ah, he still kept that. And, ooh, you're actually quite nice. Chosen Leader gives you Chosen Reduction, and Skull Crusher Leader gives you Juggernaut. Okay, wait. Wait, there may be a reason to... Valkia, where... Wait, 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 wait a second. You have Eldritchura and Vanguard deployment for... Juggernaut Mounts and Skull Crushers, but you don't have the buffs for uh, uh, for Chosen. Uh, you have Eldritch Aura and Revel and Slaughter and Murderous. Alright, so you're pretty good. You're pretty good indeed. Huh, I might swap these guys around. I mean, honestly, this now that we have... Yeah, okay, fine. We're gonna send the Eldritch Aura around this way and... Uh, <laughs> After all that traveling, it was going to join Valkia, and now, not so much. Still, some interesting finds. Anyway, you're going to Bellacor, and you're going to not Bellacor. There we go. Very nice. Very nice indeed. Though we do still have to look for battles, and ooh, are you guys ready to gore beast it up? Yes, indeed you are. Oh, this makes... Uh, this does put a smile on my face. Upgrade. There we go. Finally, Gorby's Chariots of Corn. Been one of those for ages now. And camp stands for. Oh, I can barely move with that. Eh, but you do need to heal up the chariots, so move on through this territory. We have to move through Ghost of Pahwak's territory, and there's a decent likelihood we'll declare war on them as well. Plus, I'm sure Kukar wants to anyway. 
All right, that looks good. Jaeger, you finally got your second Exalted Flamer. You are going to get a Soul Grinder of Zinch, and you'll get another one, but... Regardless, I think your army is ready to move. And you're going to Ulthuan as well. Actually, you know what? I love watching flamer units destroy undead. It's uh, one of my uh, it's one of my pleasures. So I think we'll send you to deal with the Barrow Legion and then possibly the orcs. Oh right, there's going to be a massive uh, new orc horde to deal with here as well, which should be fun. Yeah, all right, fair enough, fair enough indeed. Let's keep moving. Uh, Kuchar's moved. Siggy has moved, uh, I guess. Jaeger is right there. Valkia. Alright, what do we have here? We should probably take Avathir. I mean, we want Toran Rock, but I fear that we won't be able to auto-resolve this. Plus, there's an army being built here, which means we should probably take advantage and destroy it. Go to Avathir. Plus, starting to move this way gets us closer to Tyrion's respawn. Valkia has been promised... Oh, wow. We can't auto resolve this. Alright, I'm gonna manually fight this real quick, but uh, let's leave Valkia besieging until we move everything else and uh, figure out what, if anything else, we need to do. You guys are moving to the Golden Colossus, and ooh, Malefix has a fight on his hands, as Tehenowin is within range. I like the sound of that quite a bit, so you know, that's what we're gonna do. Let's get you an upgraded version of Curse of the Leper, because I love the spell. Uh, then we will get you... I guess we can go for Tough as Nails, because we'll want to get Retinue Physician ASAP. And then you, sir. You have Pink Fires. Let's go for... Does the base version affect all enemies nearby? Yes, indeed it does. So another point in Pink Fires, or do we go for Prismatic Plurality? I'm going to have to go for Prismatic Plurality on this one. And to double check, you do indeed have the disc. Good. That should be a fun time. Let's head to Hanoin. And see how we do. Is he going to run? He is not going to run. Oh, I love it when the enemy is not a coward. Uh, let's see. Oh, he's not on his, uh, he's not on his big mount. He's on the little flyer. Which is a mild problem, because we don't have much in the way of anti-air, but nonetheless, go. Alright, it's been a little bit too long since we've seen skill cannons, considering how effective we found them in uh, Kukar's army, so it's nice to see them here as well. Granted, they're probably not going to do uh, anything crazy against enemy red crests, at least not with their range fire, but in melee, they'll probably be a lot more effective against the red crests than a few of the other things uh, that. Uh, they would have faced off against in melee. Looks like Tehenwin is once again on his flyer, and he will give chase to our disc, uh, our disc riding mage. This does, however, put to oh wow, what the heck? Some kind of Sotek ability. Uh, there's a big old snake come down. Anyway, uh, this puts Tehenwin up in the air, and this allows our uh, range cab to do some damage to him, bringing him down to about half HP. We do have to pop about the Treason of Zinch and the Miasma Pestilence on him, just so that he doesn't pretty much insta-kill our Sorcerer. And But we will have to get the Sorcerer out of there, as he's already down to about half HP. And while well, that is a decent amount of damage. It was probably worth it to hurt uh, Tehenowin fairly significantly and keep him away from the rest of our forces. Speaking of the rest of our forces, uh, they are all moving and now the uh, Chaos Warriors of Zinch with their halberds, the uh, Chaos Warriors of Corn with their dual axes and their glowing red eyes and lastly the uh, Chaos Warriors of Nurgle with those great weapons which I'm sure are going to work well. Pretty darn great. Anyway. Charging on in versus those red crests. And like I said, we are going to have our skull cannons back us up in melee. Once again, those blood letters always look like they're just having such a grand time on these things. 
I mean, when, when everybody is riding around uh, on uh, horses and, well, I guess cold ones and whatnot, I think having a big ol' uh, screw-off motorcycle is pretty darn awesome. Especially as it minces infantry quite well and has and collects skulls to fire back at the enemy. Alrighty, well, if nothing else, uh, this is what the Chaos Warriors of Corn with Dulaxes are made of. They don't have a lot of armor piercing, but the enemy is very lightly, if armored at all. So just like the Dulax variant of the Depth Guard, these guys will absolutely mince such type of infantry. Uh, looks like we're giving chase to plenty of units. We also have our Fiends of Slanesh helping out on the flanks as well, just to deal with the enemy cold ones. Although, frankly, I'm pretty sure the uh, uh, feral cold ones. Uh, frankly, I'm pretty sure the great weapon Nerglite Chaos Warriors would deal with them just fine as well. But hey, now this allows us to combine Soporific Musk and Poison as well, which is a nice set of debuffs. Otherwise, it looks like the Hedwin's army is already very much in trouble. Fairly quick battle, and by the looks of it, as they're nearly done, I think, Tehenowin might be already gone. Huh. Okay, I guess I missed him this time around, but, uh, well, we already saw him drop, like, half HP due to the uh, fire from the range units. And wherever it was that he dropped down here, uh, we'll see him again, I'm sure. Oh, there's the, uh, there's the Ripperdactyl corpse. And there's Tehenowin, I think, or is that just a random right now? I'm pretty sure that's Tehenowin. Missing that uh, plaque of Sotek. Didn't you be holding that? Alrighty, and I believe that is the last unit in the center, and with them routing, uh, the enemy army will break. Uh, granted, this time around, the autoresolve did say that it would be a uh, easy victory, or low casualties, whatever it was uh, that it said, and in this particular case, it was correct. I mean, once again, it is just a pile of skinks, and even with Tehenowin's buffs, and they were going to have a lot of trouble. I guess the Red Crest do have plenty of armor piercing, which makes them uh, fairly fairly decent uh, to get uh, early armor piercing in the Lizardman roster, however, they're also extremely fragile and thus susceptible to getting ripped apart and by our Chaos Warriors, by our, by our Blood Shrines, or our Screaming... no, our, uh, I keep wanting to call them Screaming Skulls, the, uh, uh, the Skull Cannons. I guess, in a way, Skull Screaming towards it when it's being fired out of a cannon kind of is a Screaming Skull in, in some ways, it's just not a catapult, more of a Screaming Skull Cannon. I, I should have called one of them Screaming Skull Cannons, but I already have so many names for the uh, Skull Cannons that I don't think we'll be able to fit that one in. Anyway, a nice little fight. I'm sure we'll find much harder against the Lizards as more of their uh, armies arrive down here. All right, very nice, very nice. Malefic certainly doing good work once again, unsupported all the way out here. Uh, let's see. 140 and okay the damage was roughly the same at 23 to 24 can the two skill cannons uh really skill cannons have been doing fantastic throughout this entire campaign as for the troops the melee infantry looks like our winners were the chaos warriors of nurgle with great weapons followed by the chaos warriors of corn with dual weapons though the uh, and Zinchen warriors didn't get a chance to shine because there wasn't a lot of large units, which is why they're in this army. But not to worry, this army can deal with pretty much uh, any kind of thing they run into, which is why it's pretty darn decent. Anyway, uh, we'll sacrifice the cat. You know what? Go for kill captives right now. Because we're going to have to auto resolve the last of those troops, or the remnants of those troops, right about now. And hopefully this doesn't damage our horses too badly. They were around 53, 54, okay, 19 loss, not too bad. And kill the captives again. I think we can make use of the uh, buffs. Hey, a free potion of toughness, nice. Considering we've gotten like no potions of healing throughout the entire campaign, we have like one. It's uh, pretty tough to get them. Uh, Aniwene. Hmm. 
It's probably gonna run if we try, but we should probably still try. Uh, just gotta make sure we keep going towards fleshy abundance, get you stream of corruption, and then get you. Ooh, yes, infernal gateway, please. That'll be a big power up for the army. Go for any money. Who will indeed run? But oh well. Either we catch him or we wrap him here because he doesn't have too many places he can run now. Huh. Might he might go to C. I guess we'll well see. Uh, you know what? Go into ambush stance right there. Maybe he'll try to go for the golden colossus while we're in ambush nearby, and that'll enable us to attack him. On the other hand, maybe it won't, but why not give it a uh, and give it a shot? Kuchar has moved. Valkia has is continuing to besiege, so we'll wait on her. Uh, you, sir, Samoth, keep moving. You've got a date with the Eagle Ares, and wait, go to the Silver Pinnacle just at the edge of this territory. Since we're raiding, I don't want to raid our own allies. 687, alright, there's no way that this army is evolved, or if you're not evolving either, you are not evolving most likely, and you're definitely not evolving. Well, a bit of a shame. Unless, wait, do we have any Chaos Warriors available here? We do not, sadly. Well, there was hoping, but alas. Uh, don't believe there's any Dark Fortresses near- oh wait, there's a Dark Fortress, but it's from an ally. Yeah. And no Chaos Warriors to speak of. Oh well, not a big deal. Uh, we don't have anything with the build the requisite building to get those anyway, but that's just fine. Uh, Samoth, just stay where you are. Chant. It looks like nobody attacks you, and Queen Kalita is back yet again, and... Huh. I don't know where her army went. Well, that's curious. There's also basically nothing at Resetra, so here's what we'll do. Valmir, you're gonna head over here. Uh, maybe the army is a Doomglade? And then we'll reinforce with this force. Like so. And Glugmir, you can move into this army. Well, yeah, you know what? I think it's time. I, what? Oh, right, we need to delete a troop. Uh, we can combine the Tarnished Legion and the Chaos Warriors of Nurgle, I guess. I just gotta remember that you're called the Tarnished Legion. And, oh, you gotta be kidding me. Alright, fine. Uh, Tarnished Legion and Lords of S uh, Wait. Tarnished Legion and Bogwalkers. Who got deleted? Bogwalkers, Lords of Silence, Trenchfoot. Okay, so you're the Tarnished Legion. Or was it just Tarnished? That doesn't matter. Alright, there we go. A little bit of an annoyance, but it'll allow Glugmir to uh, get into the army. Maybe I should have deleted one of the doggos, I don't know. We'll see how the army performs if this is too few in terms of the melee line, but at the end of the day, this is still an artillery army, not a melee army, so it doesn't really need to uh, focus on them as much. Auto resolve will not kill anything. Good. Teensy bit of damage, a free channeling stuff, and we will... Oh, I actually should have had you sack it and... Screwed that up a little bit, but oh well. Oh, good. And hey, more uh, charge bonus for uh, this guy if we ever keep him. And huh, you certainly got seasoned campaigner. <laughs> Even though you're not a real lord, but that's kind of interesting. Uh, chant, I would like you to go into encamp to heal up more. You can, I hope, reach Doomglade. I'm pretty sure, yeah, he'll be able to reach Doomglade. He'll be able to reach Doomglade. This is a lie. It's just because of the uh, hero that joined the army just now. I'm pretty sure. Like 50% sure. Which is pretty sure, I guess. Anyway, let's uh, let's keep going, shall we? Uh, Demahar, you're staying where you are until Siggy can move with you. And next turn, Bellacor. Yep. What is this? Oh. I'm gonna probably take some elven territories, ain't ya? Yeah, that's fine. Uh, you're gonna grab this remnants of battle. And, ooh, oh, hello. Carl Franz is over there, right? Eh? Hmm... I wonder what's in his army. Arabian Arms, and this gives you Ensorcelled Blades, buffing up the army. Too bad we can to recruit at sea. Uh, oh, you're gonna have to suffer attrition here. Well, sorry, Bellacor. But it is what it is. You're still going over here. All right, you can keep on moving. I just want to get him on the field and battling as, uh, as he's been waiting. Glugmare. 
It is time, I guess, to declare war on Festus. I would like to... Ooh, Lewin's over there. I don't see Festus' stack, his main stack, that he used to occupy all this stuff. Four territories. Ugh, he's just... <laughs> Festus. Alright, I guess we're declaring war on you. Declare war. It's the only way. Man, he's uh, he's certainly been avoiding us, hasn't he? Uh, go into summoning stance and then head to Fort Berg. Break close victory with medium casualties. Do we risk that? Hmm. He could have a full stack here. It's just that we can't see it. I think we might have to manually fight this real quick. Kind of dumb, but what can you do? All right, just 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 uh, I'm just gonna manually fight this real quick and frankly do the same thing with Valkia. Sometimes you gotta avoid those with a lot of resolves, and this is still... F huh. I thought that the reason we were going to take casualties here was because this was not a field battle, but a fortress battle, despite the fact that the fortress hadn't been built yet. But apparently not the case. Which is interesting. Hm. Go figure. Alright, well, either way, uh, let us get some troops on the field. Like so... All right, and uh, honestly, the uh, formation doesn't really matter all that much, but... This, like this, we also gotta put you two in here, big boys, and then you. And you, this is gonna be... Well, I guess we put the Lord in here as well. And this is gonna be group one, and doggos. There are enemy doggos that I saw and enemy chariots. Make sure to fight all those. All right. Uh, start battle, you guys can just group on forward. You guys can move on around and speed it up. And... Go for those enemy hounds of decay. You guys go for those chaos chariots. Alrighty, and we're sped up. Wait until the hounds of decay reach a low enough state in order to summon chaos spawn. And then as soon as they're summoned back off, so that you don't lose any additional units, though you have already lost some. Probably could have even avoided that. Then you guys go back. I was hoping you'd destroy the chariots, but you oh took a little bit of damage there. All right. Well, two doggo lost is. Not a big deal. But let's face it. Uh, okay, you guys can move over here, and then this blob can go over here. Plague of Rust on, I guess, the enemy Chaos Sorcerer Lord. And rush him. Doggos, get ready to get back in action. Alright, I guess we can sort of watch this. I mean, we haven't seen the Beasts of Nurgle nor the uh, Great Unclean Ones work yet. We're saving this for Festus. But it's still a different army that we haven't tried as yet, even though we've tried nearly everything. This is one of the things that we have not as yet. Alrighty, anybody taking too much damage? You guys are all okay. These doggos think you can back into the action. Go surround and kill that magic. Oh. You guys continue to take damage from something? Hmm. What? It says you're in melee. Well, you're not in melee. Oh, one of the uh, doggos is still here. How oh, interesting. Oh, whatever. Uh, you know what? Charge into this. And you... Just, just, just charge on in there. Alright, enemy lord is done for. That'll should be pretty much... I say, hey, 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 war shrine. Stay near to everybody. Your purpose is to heal, not to do damage. Alright, how are these doggos looking? Yeah, they're fine. Actually shocked that the army hasn't routed yet, but I think that's about to change in a couple of seconds. There's a great on... Wow, oh, did I... Yeah, there is a great unclean one over here, and those beasts. Ooh, that's a lot of uh, AoE damage from the big boys. Really too bad we can't get a pile of Nurglings in here, but, you know, the uh, Chaos Warriors will do. Since we have no choice. Uh, speaking of Chaos Warriors, the enemy Chaos Warrior unit has routed, and another Doggo has died. There's more Chaos Doggos lost than I would have liked, but anyway, there we go. Easy little fight. And at least this way we didn't lose half the army so that if Festus comes around with a full stack, then uh, and we don't have to be as concerned. Alright, also, while we're doing this, we're sort of, kind of, surrounding the, uh, uh, the Empire of Undeath. So we'll be able to hit it from, like, five different directions at once, as soon as we're ready. Of course, Arcan has to back away to deal with uh, uh, the end game, but... Nonetheless, I don't remember whether we had enough movement range, so I just think we're not going to sack it. 
Uh, you know, I'm not risking it. Occupied, just occupied. All right. Also, we don't really care for Fort Berg Bray. I'm not even sure that we can... Maybe we can just trade it to somebody. Eh, build it up for now. You'd think that Chaos would know how to build a fort, you know what I mean? A little bit odd that they uh, and don't get any use out of it, but whatever. Oh, whatever, you stay there, you've got two territories to quickly occupy, while Mr. Gulator heads to the Brass Keep, wherein the Confederation will occur. Well, together with Kagan, I guess. Anyway, Valka still has to move, and there may be a few others that do. I guess Soul Thief, who are you again? Oh, I just put this guy here to keep an eye on the uh, Chaos Knight thing. Because I'd really like to get some of those on the field. And somebody suggested once again to uh, replace these guys faster with Chaos Knights. And we can do the same thing at Prague, potentially. But anyway, Tech Thieves, you've been doing great work and you shall continue, hopefully, to do so. Alright, success and... Now the success, and I think you just leveled up as well, so let's get you more steel tech buffs. Alright, we should also pick a tech. Uh, unless I'm mistaken, wait, let me just see here. There was something, unit experience for Chaos Knights we have. This gives us armor for Chaos Warriors and Warband, okay, Warband upgrade costs, who cares. Engines of mass destruction are great, ward save for the various uh, things, but uh, only applies to the non-hero mount ones. Missile resistance for the trolls is going to be needed for the troll army. Especially if we get some giants in there. Um, but I think none of this is super necessary right now so i think we're gonna start going through to the coronate uh, uh to the coronate gift so that we can keep one up and running forever uh sacrificial altar will be the first so that we can get the additional authority all right next master of seals you gotta keep moving good sir and uh, just stay in this general area though because i'd like to keep an eye on whether there are armies here as we will need to see. All right, who's up next? Kai guest Soul Thief. I, oh, I already clicked you. My bad, my bad. And that's it. All right, Valkia, and do a quick little fight against this little army. Once again, we're just gonna we're gonna manual this because this is pathetic. We just can't risk her getting her army getting badly damaged by the auto resolve right now. It is what it is. I'm very excited about that Juggernaut, uh, uh, Juggernaut Vanguard deployment, though. Then everybody but the Bloodthirsters will be able to Vanguard deploy. Which will be nice. Alright, uh, speaking of Vanguard deployment, EU3 here, EU3, uh, let's say here, EU3 here. And why are they all the way back there? What are you doing? Uh, Alright, you guys back here to hit them in the flanks. See you guys back here. Uh, all of you non-Vanguard deployables. You can be a separate group, I guess. And then you guys back here. Valkia, you can Vanguard deploy. You're going to be group one. These guys are going to charge forward as group two. Group three, the Knights and the, uh, uh, the Knights of the Brazen Throne. You're going to be... Mm, probably shouldn't be a group. Alright, fine. Alright, group four. Alright, good enough for me. Alright, everybody forward. Big old group forward, Valkia forward, and you guys just get ready to run on in. Alright, and max speed please, Valkia, would you please find the enemy lord and kill him? Ah, ah, wait, we found- ooh, I didn't mean to do that, I didn't think that there were units all the way back here, but apparently there are. I was hoping the enemy would maintain a line, hmm. But apparently they have not. All right, let's move Valkia in, or keep moving Valkia in. Valkia, you slap near, please, and aha, there's the enemy lord. Stop near comes down, but alas, and the enemy did not uh, go down in terms of their HP to the degree that we like. Illyrian Reavers out there will send the knights to kill them. Valkyrie's landed. Let's pop Demon Shield and buff her up while the melee troops move on in. You guys get ready to hit the range units. You Bloodthirsters go in for the enemy lord. And we just need to damage somebody heavily enough. Hmm. Why did you guys stop? Go after the Illyrian Reavers. Alright, fine. Maybe we'll send the Chaos Knights to go after these High Elven Archers instead. You two can handle the Reavers. 
All right, looks good to me. We are going to, what is this? Illyrian Reaver Archers. Go hunt those guys down. And we got some regular Illyrian Reavers over on this side, which means I think we'll send the Bloodthirster to help out against them. Now we want to send a couple of blobs of units to deal with this nonsense so that the enemy isn't firing at us. Uh, anybody low enough HP for us to be able to summon things? Ah, you are. All right, good. And this will allow the knights to continue moving on through. And in fact, you can continue moving on through as well. Valkia, go up to the enemy lord. And, okay, we don't need you here. You guys can go chase down range units. And these guys, I think, are gone, so you can go into the fight as well. All right, and, ooh, how'd you get so damaged? I guess he gets surrounded by the white lines. All right, you know, just to speed this up, I normally wouldn't do this, but... Uh, that's a drop a spell. And just pretend it didn't happen. Because obviously this is a uh, silly little fight that isn't unnecessary at all. And let's move all of you in. Get ready to pop that sacrifice to buff all the troops with the additional damage. You can land amongst them as well. All right, the noble is done. Valkia, you can head towards the enemy lord. You guys can keep on moving. Let's speed this up in a second as well. And who's taking damage? Or who's dealing that? Oh, it's once again the white lions. That armor piercing. It really does good work. All right, you guys chase down that Unilothern Seaguard. Looks like some of the enemy Illyrian Reavers are going to come back, but they're not Silver Helms and thus aren't really a threat to us in any capacity. And the enemy army should break fairly shortly in a couple seconds, I think. And there we go. All right, we'll end it before that. Ah. I was about to end it before the uh, fireball landed, but alas, we couldn't get that to happen. And now I would like you guys to chase for a little bit. I don't know whether this gives us extra XP, but I really want these guys to evolve. So just in case it does, I'm willing to spend the extra 5 seconds, or 15 seconds maybe, to do so. It's not like this matters either way. Let me just chase a couple of the enemies down, and good enough. All right, you are still rank 7, you guys are all rank 6, but you're getting there, you're getting there. Anyway, our army, despite the not taking the battle seriously at all, is more or less fine. A little bit more damage on that, uh, on that Bloodthirster than I'd like. Should have paid attention to it getting surrounded by those, uh, and by those white lines. But no problem. All right, and we will sack it for the extra XP. And then we'll move right back into it. Another helmet of many eyes and some other stuff. Let's occupy oh you. Oh, we could have actually moved through it to towards the thigh, but I guess we want to keep uh, more or less healed up. All right, you've reached rank 7. Ah, you've reached rank 8. Good, another Chaos Knight. Lovely, and this Chaos Knight is at rank 5. It'll be a while until you're a Skull Crusher, but uh, you're well underway. Uh, these... Are actually wait two well one of them I guess is ready to become a chosen. Hmm. Gonna get loss of armor, but we do need them to start racking up XP as well. Oh, actually all of you are ready for chosen. All right, you've been chosen. Lovely. Malkia's army is looking pretty good, and that's it. So two things to do: thing the first we do building, building; thing the second we end the turn and look for some more big fights. All right, so let's keep building these. Mostly, I'm just upgrading them so that I don't have to see them later on. All the main big buildings now. At least the uh, at least the building admin has become really easy this late into the campaign, so no concerns. And no notes. All right. Out of fear, we'll briefly go for the uh, Twisted Relic. I mostly do these just for the extra magic drop chance and post-battle loot chance. The souls are, let's face it, not super useful to us. And I believe that's it. Next up, we go to Quick Deal. And double check what we have here. Skeggy and Rapturous Excess will save trade because we still want to vassalize the Rapturous Excess. And take a little bit of time to do so. And nobody's all that near to Vassalage, unfortunately. Oh, <laughs> Iron Brows wants peace. Oh, that's cute. Trying to end the world and you want peace. Are you, are you sure it's a smart thing to, you know, peace out with the kind of faction that Archaeon leads? Are you, are you sure about that? 
All right, but hey, maybe consult an oracle as to what's going to happen. Anyway, uh, Garrison Lord, Pet to Glory, and a Science Skill Point. Oh, Outpost. All right, I usually do these between the episodes, but I've forgotten like five times now, so. All right, we don't care about these guys. Uh, actually, no, wait, we do care about the Hmong because I gave them Cleric Spire, which is a capital. So they can technically build stuff here. All right, Hmong we care about. Uh, these guys we do not. Goramadni tribe, I believe, also does not have a capital. So ignore them. Ign Wait, Bearsling does have a capital. Volksgrad, so we'll do that. USAG does not have a capital. Mm, anything else? Oh, Skeggy. Yes. Uh, Wait. I never traded you Skeggy. Why did I not trade you Skeggy? Okay, I should have done that right now. Damn it. All right, fine. Let's start with that then. Oh, was it because I wanted to sail out with a Well, I guess it doesn't really matter here. Enjoy yourself a nice Skeggy. Bow's offer. There we go. Now we can build an outpost that's Skeggy itself. Outpost and Skaggy. There we go. Servants of the Conclave are maxed out. Ago, we don't care about. Uh, Spirits of Shanlin, I guess we can upgrade you. Tor Elasaur, we'll build it at Tor Elasaur. It's now Tower of the Sun. All Seeing Eye maxed out. Exquisite Pain maxed out. Magathkin maxed out. Bloody Sword maxed out. Winter Tooth. We'll want to build at Fort Strug. No, at Fort Astra. No. Uh, yes, Fort Astrask. Because it's a capital, World Walkers is fine, Eshen, Rictus, Mulder, Scry Scryer, Aggrief. Eh, that one we don't really need because it doesn't really give us anything, but whatever. Uh, the Thousand Maws, you're a new one. I guess we can do the blood. Wow, you can barely build anything. Great Turtle Isle. Ah, there we go. Ooh, can you possibly build- Oh my lord, finally Bloodwreck Shrines, the Thousand Maws. You're doing it for me, finally. I mean, damn. <laughs> it took a while to get there, but uh, at least get there we did. Don't really care about the ogres because they're fairly useless in terms of allies. Disciples of Hashut are not building anything and therefore are useless, and that's it for the outposts. Lovely. All right, let's go to next turn and hopefully find ourselves a nice battle. I also forgot whether I needed to do anything with the gifts before ending the turn, but it's too late now. Raiding. Silver Pinnacle. Oh, that's us raiding our own territory. That's a Samoth Painbringer, so yeah, it's good. Alright, will anybody take this opportunity to strike at us? Rescrack Armbrows, Bloody Hands, Broken Axe, Barrow Legion. Hmm, I wonder if Carl Franz will at least uh, try to... Ah, these guys did go to Hexoaddle. Well, that's a little bit annoying. No, they just sacked it? Okay. Oh no, not our... <laughs> it's not a dark fortress, it's just a garbage little outpost or whatever we're calling these for chaos. You've essentially destroyed your own army doing this, and ooh, the eye has opened once more. Ungodly Accor will give us... A lord will be wounded instead of killed in battle. I don't even remember the last time one of our lords got killed. But this is all once again pretty useless. So I think we're just going to get the free Nurglings. Nurglings it is. Alright, Settlement Sect, Hexo well. I really want that plus 10 Lord and Hero Groot rank. That thing was awesome. We saw, we saw it only once, though. Hexo Addle Sect, Ally Begins Outpost, Constructor, Constructor, Tech, Research, and then we'll immediately take the next Tech, Bloody Summons. Alright. And that's it for the announcements. I'm good. Ah! Festus! Oh, you besieged us so we couldn't heal up. Well, it looks like we'll at least get to fight Festus and- Oh, what the heck? Avalorn is here. Alright, I can't- I gotta say, I was not expecting that one. Avalorn being here. I wonder what's in Festus' army. Ooh, he is gonna keep that giant and that manticore nice and healed up. But look at that pathetic physical resistance at a mere 10 compared to whatever nonsense it is that we have. Now, we're gonna fight that in a second. I- Ah. I was hoping that Malekith had landed here. But alas, he has not. But hey, Malekith, unlike a lot of our other uh, friendly factions slash uh, minions slash vassals, is at least not being super useless. Which is a good thing. A great thing. 
I'm just taking a look and oh, these guys have another army out here, though hopefully with two armies there, they'll both be willing to fight us, which will mean another big old fight for Mr. Chant here. And he can indeed reach them. Can you reach them in summoning? Yes, indeed he can. Hmm. And if they are willing to fight, we might be able to uh, destroy both armies. Well, I badly damage this army and destroy this army completely, and then uh, move on to Doomglade. Well, somebody will still need to destroy this. If only our uh, vassals were at war with them. I wish it wasn't so impossible to get our vassals to actually fight. But anyway, let's do Festus, shall we? And, ah, this guy's building an army. we got to be careful about that. Gilator, come here. And Kagan... Wait, I'm just going to move Gilator first so I don't forget what I was doing with him. The Rod is headed to Arangrad. Oh, there's a little island here. Though I guess we have materials at sea for a pretty darn decent time now. So it won't really matter. And oh, the rats are actually going to go after this guy. Argorash now. Yes. Alrighty. Glugmir. You will soon to be replaced by Festus. You will soon be replaced by Festus, but before you are replaced, you must be you, know, you must be the one to defeat him. Uh, what does he have in terms of infantry? He has some. He has some. We'll get some mileage out of Gehenna's Golden Hands, I think. So that is what we shall do. He's not going to run, and a valiant defeat. Ooh, Dragon Ogres may be a problem. Eh, yeah. he's got a decent stack. And we have no heroes here. Oh, I gotta remember to get heroes for him. He should probably have a couple of exalted heroes of Nurgle. His army should be just super healy. Yes. Also, let's give fear. Yeah, we can't have our lord routing. Anyway, should be a fun time. Go. Oh, he said, if you insist. I thought you said, if you exist, and I'm like, I exist. Uh, but anyway. <laughs> uh, anyway, or do I? Anyway, here we go. Should be a pretty darn fun fight. I think we're going to have to really work for this one. Uh, going to have to be careful about Festus himself in particular, but also the fact that he can leverage all of these giant units uh, that he can keep healed. He also has a bunch of heroes, and our army isn't uh, going to be particularly effective at taking all of them down. We have no heroes of our own, and our lord is very low level and limited in what they can provide in terms of spells just a plague of rust Gehenna's golden hounds and searing doom so because we actually have to take this battle a little bit seriously we've deployed a little bit differently uh, than we usually do separating our army into two distinct groups now, the reason for this is festus can only be at one portion of the battle so whichever part of the map or whichever part of the battlefield doesn't have festus is going to lose so we're going to bank on one of these uh, army sort of uh, um, portions winning and then one of them probably distracting the the enemy or possibly losing and all depending on how that works out so and we shall see anyway we're gonna start the battle off by casting a Gehenna's golden hounds right in the middle of an ad pile of enemy chaos warriors I suppose in retrospect if I was to play this again what I should have maybe done is kept our army as far back as possible just to repeatedly try casting in those Gehenna's Golden Hounds at the enemy army. It does seem that they would have probably allowed us to hit their uh, hit their line a few times with this, though to be fair at the same time. And due to uh, not great luck with vortexes, the uh, hounds will miss like 90% of their time on fields. So, eh. Kind of hard to say how worth it it would have been. Anyway, it looks like Festus will travel with about, mm, let's say, three quarters of his army over on this side. And judging by that, I would imagine that this portion of our army will get overwhelmed. That said, this portion should be able to absolutely obliterate the enemies. Uh, Nurgle versus Nurgle here again. So we're facing off against some pestilent uh, doggos, though the uh, great unclean one and the uh, spawn and whatnot should have no problem at dealing with those as uh, spawn fighting together with others spawn or against others spawn and together with others spawn and we got the beasts of nurgle in here as well 
Man, yeah, there's, uh, there's a lot of regeneration going on on both sides, though Festus should be able to either out-damage or out-regen us, depending on, uh, on what he's doing over there. Uh, looks like one of their units has taken damage. I believe it was the uh, enemy unit of Chaos uh, Warriors that hit, got hit with those Gehenna's Golden Hands, and it does allow us to summon those Chaos Spawn and hopefully distract uh, the enemy. Over on this side, the giant has made it in and... Hmm. Interested to see. In a contest between a giant and a great unclean one, I would imagine that the giant would probably win, as giants are more of an anti-single entity sort of thing. Whereas the great unclean ones would probably be a lot better, or no probably about it, are a lot better at uh, killing droves of infantry rather than a single entity. I like that giant. Do have to be careful about giant obliterating our war shrines, though, as we really need these to keep everybody, if not tip-top, at least holding the ground or holding the line. The enemy also has a unit of dragon ogres here, and with their anti-large are going to be very effective against things like the beasts of Nurgle. And pretty darn bad matchup for the Beast of Nurgle in particular, so we'll have to keep uh, keep them alive. Gotta be careful of these guys, as uh, we don't want them disintegrating since they are from our allies. It would be nice if your allegiance would come back uh, if you were to lose a unit uh, gifted by your allies. Otherwise, I do feel like I uh, sometimes spend a little too much effort uh, just trying my best to keep those specific units alive so that uh, the allegiance isn't wasted. Anyway, Fires of Chaos comes down on a blob of Chaos Wars and by the looks of it nearly rips them apart. Festus is very much still in the battle, though it looks like with the Chaos Spawn destroyed he will no longer be distracted. Uh, our unit of Forsaken is routing and one of our Marauders is routed as well but are now coming back. Over on the leftmost flank, it looks like, as expected, we pretty much destroyed all the enemies over here, and we're going to do our best to chase them down with our Pestilent Doggos, but on the rightmost flank, similarly as expected, the enemy are most definitely winning. Forsaken are out, another unit of Marauders is nearly out, the Great Unclean one is below half HP, and our Lord is at half as well. And which ain't so great, and the Beasts of Nurgle are at half as well, so we are going to probably have to move a few of our demonic units away, unless they get so heavily damaged that they begin to disintegrate. Can't be underestimating the combo of Giant plus the, uh, plus the Dragon Ogres. And the Dragon Ogres have been taking hits for quite a while here, both from the uh, Pestilent Doggos and from the... Uh, and from a few other things, but they're just fine. Though they do have those spawn and the giant and all the heroes to rely upon. Anyway, Nurgle on Nurgle will continue here. Though we will back off the Great Unclean One and this unit of Beasts of Nurgle to try to keep them alive and regenerating. Speaking of doing so, we've done the same thing with this unit of Beasts of Nurgle. They were below half HP, so I removed them from the battle to where they can just stand out here and regen a little bit. And hopefully they will get up to a decent amount of HP to head back into the battle. Looks like Festus has joined the remnants of his troops as well now. And all of this is still very much going to be a problem until we can either isolate him and bring him down, or maybe even isolate uh, the rest of what remains to the enemy army. That said, the balance of power is in our favor at about 70-ish percent, but a lot of our army is routing. Pretty much all of our infantry are done. One of our doggos is done as well. And just the monsters alone are going to uh, struggle a little bit against the enemy Chaos Spawn and those Dragon Ogres. Which is quite interesting. If we keep the army, or this particular army, in this exact form, they're always going to struggle against monstrous units. Though I suppose if we get a couple of exalted heroes in here, and both with that Locus of Fecundity, we will be able to uh, not only keep ourselves healed, but have those particular heroes uh, damage single entities for us. In which we're uh, sort of struggling with a little bit. We are still going to continue dropping spells. The Searing Doom is not going to be super effective against the Dragon Ogres, but it'll uh, do a teensy bit of damage to them. They are getting constant heals from those children of Nurgle and Fecundity on them as well. Now, damn it, Festus. <laughs> ah. 
We're definitely getting a taste of our own medicine here. Ooh, it looks like these beasts of Nurgle are down to three and about 20% of their HP. Definitely gonna have to back them off unless they die. Festus, fortunately, has been isolated by a bunch of other units from this side, and we're going to do our best to have every single one of them focus him down. Can't keep him casting and can't allow him to keep getting that uh, Children of Nurgle passive up and running, healing all of his single entities and low uh, model units. All right, and how's he doing? He's still at about half HP with the sheer number of troops over on this side. We shouldn't have too much problem. We are still definitely having a problem on this side, however, as the, uh, as the Beast of Nurgle try to make it out of there. And we are just barely managing to keep this great unclean one alive. Gotta make sure that we keep it near to that uh, war shrine. Dago's still helping out as well. They've spent a lot of the battle chasing units, but they did attempt to uh, destroy those dragon ogres a couple times with uh, several of them. And ooh, the great unclean one has begun to melt away as well. This is gonna be close. If nothing else, while I do believe the battle will be ours, it's going to be close in terms of which units will survive. And, oh damn, the Beasts of Nurgle are actually pretty big. And, I mean, pretty big even in this particular form, as in an SFO where there's four of them rather than one. I expected them to be a little bit smaller than the, uh, uh, than the Dragon Ogres, but yeah, gotta keep these beasts alive as best we can, though fortunately it looks like Festus, at least, is finally routing. No more spells for you, and we'll hopefully be able to bring him down with those units. Otherwise, the battle continues against the Giant, who is still relatively close to full HP, and one of the Exalted Heroes is nearly full as well, though at least one of them is at half. And oh, for a second I thought that they were routing, but they are not. They still, they have another fecundity on them, but fortunately Festus finally goes down. And now we just gotta kill off the uh, hardest targets remaining. Well, there's probably not going, it's, it's, we're probably not going to be able to bring the giant down. It's just too much of a damage sponge, but the exalted heroes and the dragon ogres should still be susceptible. And get them, uh, Pestilent Dagos, they're shaken. Now ah, they're steady again. <laughs> I gotta keep charging them until they are out, but here comes uh, the other portion of the army. Our leftmost flank, having defeated the enemy's left flank and killed off Festus, can now join the fray and hopefully finish the battle up in our favor. All right, will the enemy around? Yes, indeed, they will around. Just seeing the extra units arrive and, uh, and charging on, and the enemy realizes that they can no longer win. A Pyrrhic victory, however, and a fairly close one uh, to that. We did, we did have to back off all of our infantry routed, and it was just our monstrous units uh, that kept us in the game, which is pretty great. Funnily enough, it seems like Festus was the one uh, who uh, gave us the biggest fight in terms of trying to confederate him, the most difficult, which is uh, pretty great, especially considering, uh, well, let's say he made it worth the wait. Ooh, all right, I gotta say, good job to Festus. He certainly gave us a proper fight, managed to get nearly 40k damage. On him himself, he also got a lot of mileage out of the Dragon Ogres because of their anti-large, uh, specifically against our army. Mm, great job to the Giant for tanking, tanking quite a bit of our hits as well. Very, very nice. I was very wary of the Beasts of Nurgle melting away as well as they were, uh, they were starting to have issues there, but uh, that's okay. And we did manage to keep them all on the field, if only just barely. Enslave those captives, please. And he's gonna back up. Now, we do have to be careful. Carl Franz has returned here, and Lewin is nearby. In fact, they're both nearby. And uh, get the uh, defeated Festus trade on you, and then might actually make you worth keeping. Though, you can only be... devoted to either Undivided or to Zinch. It's familiar is okay. Hmm. Aspiring leader is completely useless. Unbreakable and indisputable chan. Neither of these two are all that great. 
so we'd probably want to devote you to something. Either way, we probably want to move away from Carl and from Lewin. What? They'll most likely retake Fort Bert Bray, but that's not a big deal. I'd rather make sure that we A, destroy you. Uh, quick little auto resolve. Let's put the war banner on you. I don't know. Hopefully, this doesn't do too much to. Oh, I fear that it's going to badly hurt this great unclean one. Well, oh, it did hurt it, but not as bad as it could have gone. And hey, a blasted standard. That's nice. Uh, we will enslave captives once more for a little bit more replenishment. And then we need to head to Castle Hartois, though. Man, this is. Uh, <laughs> Oh, it's very dangerous. You're in a very dangerous position, Glugmir. You could get attacked by several armies potentially belonging to the Barrow Legion. I'm almost tempted to peace out with them for a few turns just to make sure that they can't kill him off. Hmm. Alright, either way, ignore Shisoro. We can sack it for XP. And then move into it. Alike, so leaving Festus with one territory. Yes, yes, yes. All right, so as long as he doesn't manage to retake either of these, next turn we'll be able to finally vassalize him. Though a great job, or a confederate him, a great job to him, I gotta say, for that fight. Uh, just in case we fight again. Hmm, we'll probably want sp Spells. Uh, if it's the undead we're fighting, we'll probably want to max out Searing Doom and Gehenna's Golden Hounds uh, just to be able to use them repeatedly. And yeah, metal shifting will work nicely for our big ol' uh, monstrous units, but nonetheless, I think this is the way to do it. Also, eh, we gotta repair it. I was thinking about building the, uh, the Exalted Hero building here, which we can't do, I guess. Hmm, it's all right. All righty, let's keep on moving with... Oh, wow, we are basically out of time. Damn, wasn't expecting that, but oh well. All right, you should be able to get to Kazidir Kalaz. We have three turns, and yeah, you'll reach it. Good, Archie, good. Fortunately, he moves so damn far that it's uh, not really a concern, and he'll, he'll have plenty of uh, enemy stacks to fight. Azazel. I guess you're going to have to hunt down this little stack here. And then move on to Machu Peaks. And... I don't remember if anybody had a Path of Glory in your army to level up in channeling stance. So just... Oh, really? 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 <laughs> it's going to... This is going to kill the Sultan of Set. All right, fine. You know what? I'm going to call the episode here. I'm going to do this between the episodes because it's a horrible waste of time. And then I'll uh, do the admin in between the episodes as well. So it'll work out. Anyway, calling it here. Next time we finally confederate Festus. It'll be a few turns before he's on the field, but at least Belacor is on the field. The invasion of Ulthuan has begun, and so has the invasion of Lustria. So plenty more fun times to be had. Stay tuned. Don't forget to leave those likes and comments below, especially to Threshold. All glory to the algorithm. Thanks for watching.